It's getting pretty late now, almost midnight. Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to another video. And in this video, we're going to talk a bit more about JSON. Now in the last video and couple of last videos, we saw that we received the JSON response, but we were not treating it as a JSON. We were treating it more like a string, which was a good start, I won't say that. But in this video, we're going to take care, and in fact, in this video as well as couple of next videos, we are going to take care of the JSON. It is very crucial and essential part that you understand how to create JSON as well as how to handle JSON when it is coming up from a web request. And thus, these couple of videos are going to help you to understand that in much, much depth. For these two examples or these two videos especially I would say that keep the examples exactly same and please write them also and they will help you to understand a little bit more onto the struct. Yes this is a revisit to struct as well and we're going to take care of the JSON as well. So without a further ado let's go ahead and get started with that. Of course just like always we are going to go ahead into 22. Did you remember this is 22? This is so far. I hope you are enjoying that if you're watching the series entirely. So let's call this one as a bit more JSON. Yeah, this is fancy name. So we're going that in that territory now. And main.go. Let's open this up into integrated terminal. And just like always, let's initialize the mod. So go mod initialize. And let's call this one as simply my JSON. Okay, nice and easy. We should actually close this one, close this one, and there we go. And let's go ahead and create a package main. And then we're going to have a main method, not like that, function, and then main. Now, as of now, we're going to just say font, and we're going to say welcome to JSON video, which I really mean, I would like to welcome all of you here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a structure. And this is going to be a structure of type uh, course. Remember, I'm using the lowercase c, so I'm not exporting this variable uh, anywhere else or I'm not making it public anywhere. So keep that in mind just to give you more on that. I'm just keeping it lowercase. So it's not like I have created all the time it as uppercase. It needs to be uppercase. This can be a lowercase as well, just to give you a brief idea on that. So first, uh, let's go ahead and put up some of the values. So name is obviously going to be string. Then we are going to have a price, which is going to be an integer. And then we are going to have a platform because maybe I push courses on a variety of platforms. So that's, it is important. And of course, that's going to be a type of string. And then we are going to have a password. And yes, it is very important that you have this password as well. I'll show you some of the important stuff based on this password in a minute. And this is going to be type of string. And courses usually have some tags, uh, something like, hey, this is a web development course, this is a mobile development course, maybe DSA related or something. This is going to be a slice of string. So let's go ahead and save this. And automatically you can see this, all of this is going nicely. Okay, no big deal. We have seen that. Uh, we have worked with that as well. Now let's go ahead and in this video, we're going to work with the encoding of the JSON. What do I mean by encoding the JSON? This simply means I have a data and it can be a slices, it can be arrays, key value pair, whatever that is. I want to con convert that data into a valid JSON. That's what the goal is. Pretty simple. Let's go ahead and do that. And that is usually known as encoding of the JSON. So we're going to keep our name of the function as same, which is uh, encode JSON. Pretty creative. <laughs> there we go. And let's go ahead and work on with that. Okay. So what we're going to do here, uh, we're going to say that there are some LCO uh, courses. If I can write that, that would be great. And let's go ahead and use this. So this is going to be a slice of courses. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one as that this is going to be a slice of type courses. Remember, we have created this structure course. So that's what exactly this slice is going to consist of values. Let's go ahead and add some values. We have to add in the same order. So we're going to say the course name is react.js bootcamp. Then is the pricing. So pricing is directly integer. So let's call this one as 299. It is 299, if I remember correctly. The platform it is hosted on, multiple, but in this case, we are going to go for learn code online dot in. And uh, what else we got? We need to check that. We got password and tags. So something a little bit interesting. Let's go ahead and work with that. So password is a string. I'm going to say ABC123. I know not very secure, but let's go ahead and work with that, uh, this password up here. And finally, we are going to have a slice of string, and that is going to have some of the tags. So let's go ahead and say this is uh, web dev. 
and uh, this is also going to have a tag of JS. Just to give you an idea, yes, this is all what we got up here, so there we go. Now, this is uh, okay, and why are you having a problem? It says you're missing a comma. Yes, I am, so save that. No, I'm not missing a comma here, I'm missing a comma here. Save that, and there we go. And uh, this looks okay, and it says undeclared, so you are using declared but not used. So okay, I can take care of that. And this should be not courses, this should be course. Okay, so hopefully all errors are gone. Now what we need to do is we need to have at least couple of values so that we can work on with that. So let's go ahead and uh, make two copies of it. And let's make this one as 199. This one, let's make it as Mern Bootcamp. Uh, this one would be uh, probably Angular. Yes, we have that as well. I'm not sure about the pricing of Angular, so let's just keep it 299. The platform is same. Let's change the password a little bit. This one is going to be BCD123. This one is going to be HIT123. Uh, let's change this one as this one is full stack. So let's change this one as full stack. And this one is probably somebody said Google as a tag. I don't know why, but this is what we have. Okay, so now we have some data to work on with. And in fact, what we can do is, uh, let's go ahead and remove this entirely so that I can show you some more stuff. Let's go ahead and say this is going to be nil. Okay, nice and easy. We have a variety now. Uh, we have a lot of stuff going on in here and we can have some fun with that. Okay, this is all. Now, coming up on to the important part. Now, the goal is that let's go ahead and package this data uh, as JSON data. That's where uh, some important things kicks in. So let's call this one as final JSON. And final JSON will be created by, like this, it will be created by the library JSON, which is encoding slash JSON, again given to us by uh, Golang directly, and it has a lot of methods. And a couple of methods that you're going to see here are Marshall, uh, Marshall indent, Marshall error, and all of that. Basically, Marshall is the way, let me go ahead and write that. So Marshall is actually the way how you actually implement of, it's kind of an implementation of JSON. You'll get to that uh, in a minute. So let's go ahead and pass on the interface up here. Remember, we always have to pass on an interface here. What is interface? It's a word being borrowed, and it's kind of an alternative version of the struct. Yep, that's simple. So let's go ahead and say all the LCO courses go up here. Now the reason why it is crying a little bit with the red squiggly line is because it might sometime not be able to convert that into JSON. So we obviously need to handle the error as well. So there we go, nice and easy. Now let's go ahead and try to print it out and see if it is that easy to convert any data into a JSON, valid JSON in fact. And to be honest, in this case, I'm not really convinced to have an underscore. I would like to handle the error because it is very prone to error. Let's go ahead and say if error is not equals to nil, let's panic out into error. And if everything is all good, then I would like to have a font instead of println. I'm going to go ahead and say printf. And I'll use the percent %s to print this, of course, with a slash n. And let's go ahead and call this one as final JSON. OK, so much of the work. Let's see how much. Uh, good we are doing or we are doing anything wrong. So let's say go run main. Am I on the wrong? Yep, I am on to the wrong stuff. A wrong folder actually. Let's open this up again. And there we go. Go run main.go. And it's going to take a little bit time. Welcome Jason. And it took a time because we never called this function. Let's go ahead and do that. Sorry, my bad. And code Jason. Again, second time is always the charm. Okay, there we go. Now instantly we see that we have an array and inside the array we have these objects and they are working absolutely fine. Couple of things, very interesting thing that you should notice. It is a little bit hard to read this data. That's point number one. We are able to see this password as well, which is not really ideal and good. And in the cases of this uh, tags, the last one, it says null, not the nil. So obviously, the user who is consuming this API need to be very aware of this. But we can make this API a little bit more uh, easier to read or something like that. So just like we have Marshall, we have this Marshall indent as well. And the Marshall indent takes uh, two parameter. Uh, the first one is the, is the name of the interface or the struct itself. 
And the second one is based on what should I indent the values? Because it doesn't know that you are throwing up the JSON. It can be used for a couple of other things as well. So in the case of JSON, uh, always and always, uh, let me go ahead. It says what kind of prefix you want to use and the indent. I'll show you both of them. First, prefix, no, we don't do any kind of prefix. And for the indent, we are gonna go ahead and sl say slash T. Don't worry, don't worry about this prefix. I'll show you and within a minute you'll understand that, okay, this is what prefix does. Okay, if I run this one again, notice this time I got a little bit better result because my result is indented based on slash T because when internally all of your data is converted into JSON, it is indented based on the slash T. That's how it actually does in the Golang. So this is all good. But what about this empty space? What do you want to have here? Just for fun to show you that sometimes there are use cases for that. If I go ahead and pull up LCO, remember everything is being spaced out based on the slash t so we are seeing a tab here we are seeing a tab here so every place where there should be a tab it is a tab but if you put up an lco here now something interesting just wait and watch this one and it is so hard to explain this one yeah i get that there is a prefix so every single time you hit the tab or anything you will be seeing this prefix that's why i told you it is too much hard to explain i don't know how to put this into word but again there might be some use cases i haven't found one Let's go ahead and run this one again. But the problem still exists. The problem still exists that here I'm seeing password. And also when I'm consuming this, notice the name is all uppercase letter. This is not really good that some of them are uppercase and it's, it's not really fun. At least all the keys that are coming up, it is kind of recommended and a good practice that all of them should be lowercase. And probably you're calling this as a name, but it should be called inside the API as a course name. So let's go ahead and see a couple of interesting stuff. So what this happens is, or what the facilities are given to you, Golang is aware of that, that you'll be creating structures like this, and you will be throwing these structures as a JSON format. It is a very obvious thing to do. And that is why JSON actually provides you some of the more fun stuff. You can go ahead and come up into the string and provide a third parameter inside these backticks. Yes, they are just below your escape key. And you can say JSON colon and then double quotes. So in whatever the double quotes you say that I don't want to call it as name, I want to call it as uh, something like course name, JSON is fully aware that you're gonna be doing this kind of a stuff. So if I just save this and try to run the program again, let's go ahead and clean this up. Now notice here it's being called as course name all the time. So you don't need to worry about uppercase or lowercase. You can kind of create an aliases for all of that. Let's go ahead and work a little bit more on these aliases and tell you something more fun stuff. So again, uh, backticks. And again, it's not really compulsory that you give these JSON to every single of them. Let's just say we, we want to skip that for pricing. Pricing looks good. Maybe in the uppercase P it looks good. I don't know why, but it looks good. And then we can go ahead and say JSON colon. I don't want to call it as platform. Maybe calling it as website makes much more sense. Okay. Interestingly, the reason why I have got this password field here so that I can show you that you can go ahead and say inside these double quotes, if you go ahead and put up a dash, this dash simply means I don't want this field to be reflected whoever is consuming my API. So this is going to just entirely remove the password here. Very important field. And last but not the least, I'm gonna go ahead and say JSON. And here I'm going to say something very, very interesting. We are going to call this one as, come on, let's go inside these double quotes, as tags with all lowercase, but just separated by comma. And let me show you an error as well because I, I went into this one. And we can say omit empty. Omit empty simply says that if the value is uh, null, in this case nil, then just don't throw that field at all. Now, as soon as you're going to save this, you're going to see that there is a small error. It says, hey, uh, the, the JSON tag and omt are not compatible. This is compatible, but ha you have to be very careful about this space here, which is really the common culprit. As soon as you save this, everything is happy. Okay, enough of this. Now let's go ahead and try to run this and see what's happening now. Okay, uh, interestingly, you can see that at the very end of it, the course name is Angular, obviously. The price, we didn't change it out, so it's same. We didn't call it as platform, we called it as website, so that's nice. And in the code, you can see that we call this one here as nil, so that field didn't even appear. So if any field is nil, we are not gonna be throwing it up. 
and uh, rest all are pretty same our tags is a slice or an array whatever you are consuming and in what language you are consuming and calling this one this is pretty nice and notice the password is not coming in but if i go scroll a little bit the password was coming in so if you place dash on any of that uh, aliases in this struct it just works so it is so much nice. So in this video, just a quick summary, you learned about the aliases that you can put up onto the struct, so struct revision. And also you realize that it's just a kind of a one-liner to convert any piece of code into an actual consumable JSON data. That's pretty much it. It's quite a long video. And let me know in the comment section if you're enjoying this series. If you're enjoying it, drop me a hi on Instagram, no pressure. And let's catch up in the next video.